I'm just in the R6 menu and I'm just going to talk about white balance. So if you go to your menu and go down to white balance, we'll just have a quick look. Now generally during weddings and anything I do, I gen generally use auto white balance the majority of the time and only switch over to custom um, Calvin or take a white balance re reading. Very, very rarely to be honest with you. The main reason being that I'm, I'm using raw. So when you're in auto white balance, if you're producing a raw file and you're producing a JPEG, then the JPEG will take on whatever white balance that your camera is set to. So if I set it to daylight, then it will probably do 5,200 Kelvin. Let's just get over to daylight and have a look. Um, the main thing to remember is the raw file, you can edit afterwards. Whereas with the JPEG, it's baked in. You'll hear that term quite a lot. So just think that when you're out and about, producing a raw file and a JPEG file is a really good idea. So as you see, 5,200K. So if we set this to daylight and we went out on a very sunny day, we wouldn't be far off. Um, Canon have done this and so that anybody can use a white balance system. They can walk outside, use auto white balance and not really worry about it. Or go one stage further and set the sunny symbol. So you'll find that um, the sun varies through the day, obviously warm through to cool in different times of the year. But if we take July as an average and you know midday, then we might be at 5,200K. Just to give you some idea, I white balance most of my weddings at 5,000K to 5,200. And people, you know, they tend to be very accurate with their white balance. But the bottom line is I've done prints over a range from 4,800 to maybe 5,800. And when you're printing, it doesn't make the massive difference that you think it will. So don't get too obsessed with it. Um, but the workflow I'm doing is auto white balance and that produces a raw file. Then I worry about white balance during Lightroom. But for you, just have a play around with these. So getting to know the K value is really important. Um, the light I'm using to record me at the moment is 5200K, it's a Wii light um, by Viltrox. So this light is 5200K and not 5600K. So we don't really want to be setting it to daylight. So as we go over, you can see we've got a K at the end. Um, we can, so we can exactly set 5600K. Let's just move on a little bit further and tell you what I've never really used and you know what what I would advise you do is don't get too too far into these because the bottom line is what I think you should be using is auto white balance. So shade 7000k. Now comment below, I'd really be interested if anyone's ever used 7000k. So they're saying in the shade of a building which I spend a lot of my time or have over the past 15 years in open shade at the side of buildings. I don't ever remember white balancing to 7,000K. Um, so as I say, comment below. I'd be really interested how you're using white balance, especially with the R6, um, how you're finding auto white balance is going. But yeah, so 7,000K, I don't really ever remember um, switching my camera over to shade to produce a JPEG. So, you know, it's a bit too far, 7,000K. Now, what you might find as you start using, to produce a JPEG, you might actually use the cloudy symbol. This warms it up a little bit. So 6,000K. Now, I, I can remember times when I have been around 6,000K. So, you know, just bear in mind that you've got all of these settings in the R6. You can use all of them, obviously, but, that some of them are just, you know, not that useful. As I say, auto white balance, produce a raw file, produce a JPEG, daylight you'll find works well outside and just go from there. Now, one I've definitely never used, well, two I've never really used are these two, which, you know, are fluorescent and, you know, tungsten. So 3200K. So, 
I don't tend to use tungsten at all because I find that 3200K is not what we're, where we are with LED lamps anymore. So LED lamps mixed in with daylight when I'm doing a wedding tend to end up being maybe about 4000K. So just tungsten is really in a decline now. And I think what Canon and everyone needs to look at is putting in more warm white um, and cool white LED balance. So LED lamps are being used everywhere now and even a lot of fluorescence going out. So, you know, I think they need to maybe think about changing their menu slightly. It's a bit sort of behind, I think. And um, as I say, one of the other ones is this white fluorescent light. Now that's at 4,000K. So between 3,200K inside and 4,000K, you're definitely seeing lamps around that area, but whether you'd actually shoot JPEGs and then risk setting this, I don't think I would. And that's why I think these are becoming less and less useful. Now, one that is in there is flash. And granted, when you use different flash modifiers, you might get a different white balance through them. Um, bare flash bounced off a ceiling, a white ceiling, you might be around 5,200K stroke 5,600K. So what do they do? They actually don't give you the K value in the R6. Um, now, just to let you know, this will be around that area, 5,200K to 5,600K. And from my tests, this is pretty much the same as daylight. So what they're looking to do is well, they should put it in there, to be honest, Canon. You should put that in so people can see it. So, um, yeah, so just let you know, that is pretty much the same as daylight, 5200K. So do I use the flash? Um, no, I don't, because I don't actually know what that is without testing it. So again, I don't think I'd use that. Now, taking white balance readings that's another area you can go into. You'll need a neutral gray card. Um, on the resources page, go and take a look. I'll, I'll put on my YBAL card. It's worth going over to that page just to have a look at the YBAL card. Now there's a lot of effort gone into that card and it is neutral and it's the only card I trust to be honest. This is where you take a photo of a neutral gray card or a light gray card, which a YBAL is, and then you can work from there. So custom white balance can be useful in the studio. I mean, I stopped taking custom white balances out and about at weddings, but I, for, you know, for a few months I did that. Um, so maybe it's worth buying one just to play around with and to get used to white balance really. So yeah, taking a custom reading of a white balance card might be worth doing just to train yourself. You can always sell it if you don't use it anymore. Um, but yeah, take a look at the resources page. Now the one I do use is K. So at the end of your menu, you've got this K symbol. And what you're gonna be able to do with that is actually physically set the white balance. So with this light I've got at the moment, I'm not using the camera to record me, it's just a webcam, obviously it's doing its own white balance. But just to let you know, this, this light is 5,600K straight out of the factory and I've tested it and I've put it through Lightroom. So in there, I put 5,600K on the K symbol. I would set that and that's a fixed white balance for that particular image or video. And that's where Calvin being able to set Calvin is very useful is with video as well, because you haven't got a raw file. And so you've got to learn a little bit about Calvin if you're gonna do um, a mixed coverage of video and stills which is something that I've got into. So being able to fix your white balance, this is the one I would look at, K. The others, you know, definitely play around with them and have a look in the learning curve. But my two are really auto white balance with photography, producing stills, I don't want to worry about white balance. Then when I go over to video, I'm in Kelvin and I'm choosing the exact Kelvin for the lighting situation, usually with me, it's in the studio like this. So that, that gives you an idea. So really for me, I could miss out everything in the middle 
and I would go auto white balance for stills and I would go Kelvin for video and stills in the, um, in the studio. Go on over to the resource page. Um, there's a lot on there, there's all the equipment that I use and I intend expanding that page. It's just a series of links and bits and pieces at the minute. But um, yeah, the R6 is pretty much giving you what most cameras are giving you. Um, but yeah, I hope that helps and just gives you another idea about white balance. Thanks a lot.